Okay, so hello everybody. I am Vashti Whitfield. Get called Vashit, Vishnu, Vashti, whatever the fuck you like. Really, you can call me. Sorry, I'm not allowed to swear. Vashti. Um, before we go any further, I want to just ask you, you all, well, some of you wrote down this morning that you had an intention, what you'd like to get out of today. But actually, I'd just like you to press pause for a moment. I want you to think about if you had an intention for this year, 2018, so just press pause. When I started the year, New Year's resolutions, you know, what I'm going to do with this year, what I'm going to make it about, what was that intention? So just think back, bloody ages ago, right? So I'd like to ask just a couple of people, what was your intention? Put your hand up really quickly because I know you're dying to share. Quickly, quickly, because we have such a short time. Who here had an intention? Gentleman with the hat. So really loudly, my intention was? My intention was to um, kick it up a notch in terms of what I was accomplishing and what I was doing business and personally. So to kick it up a notch in terms of what you were doing businessly, uh, business and personally. Okay. What I want to ask you now, don't drink. We haven't finished our work together. <laughs> what, if anything, has gotten in the way for you of honoring that intention? You thought you were going to just sit back and watch, didn't you? <laughs> this is me getting warm, by the way. There's strategy to what I'm doing. I would say it would be getting distracted from chasing that intention. Mm. I'd say it was following other things that may have been things I wanted to do but might have taken away from fulfilling the intention. Okay. So what I think I heard there was getting distracted, chasing other things, but it was about focus. So not staying clearly focused on that intention, getting distracted by ego, by hot men or women, by other exciting projects, whatever, whatever it was, it was about focus. So the reason, and thank you for your contribution this morning, I'm just gonna put that down for a minute. Let's move forward. Before I actually get start, started, I wanna talk about what intention means to me. So intention means to me three things, and, and you can write this down. I always recommend, if you, if you have a little juicy insight, write it down, because you will forget it. So insight means three things to me. Uh, sorry, intention means three things. The first thing it is, is what is most important to me? That's the first thing that intention is for me. What is most important to me? The second thing intention is, is how can I demonstrate that intention? So what's most important? How do I demonstrate it? And third, and really importantly, man with black cap, how do I stay in constant alignment with what that intention is? So ending where I mean to go on, intention is all about alignment. Alignment with what's most important to you, with how you want to honor that, demonstrate that, which means in the way you act, what you do, what you say, how you create, who you are as a person, how well you kiss, whatever it is. And again, last but not least, how do I live in alignment with honoring my intention? So that's really what I'm going to talk about today. So I'm going to give you a little bit of background on me before we go any further. Um, I was the daughter of two awesome hippie parents. So I did the original hippie trail, went to Afghanistan, Pakistan, Iran, all over the place in a camper van. Lived in a world where I didn't usually speak the language. Had two very, very unique individuals showing me the way of life, which is why, as many of you know, I can't spell for shit. But there's so much more to my personality. And then I was brought back into a world where I'd been exposed to so much that following rules didn't always make sense to me. So from a very early age, I realized that as much as people were always going to tell me I was too much or not enough, I had to come from a place of actually owning my own intention. What was it I wanted to offer? Who did I want to be? How could I get the most out of any given situation by being clear on one thing? And that one thing was, what's my intention? So let's move on. I've got a, I've got a multitask here, which is not good when I'm trying to speak, okay? So at some point, I'm going to try and eat the microphone or shove this in my pocket. No, we don't want to go there yet. 
So the slides are in a slightly different order. So I want to tell you now about the rest of the story in terms of life. So I was very, very lucky in terms of having this very clear intention. And one of those clear intentions was that at some point in my life, I would partner with somebody that would be the missing piece, I like to call them. That person that would allow you to really see the best and worst of yourself and love you wholeheartedly anyway. So one day, walking along in a street in London, in Shoreditch, one of my favorite places, I recognized this man. And I really recognized him because usually where I was walking back in those days, you wore a suit and everybody kind of looked a bit kind of cityfied. And this smoking hot, dude walked towards me, which was quite a surprise that I even stopped and looked because I normally like the ugly bastards, the ones that are really mean to you. <laughs> Father issues, let's be clear. Anyway, I looked at this guy and I suddenly realized that I recognized him and I knew him and I couldn't quite grasp and I finally got his name and I realized that his name was Addy, I shouted. And in that moment, he turned around and went, hmm, I vaguely recognize you, but you used to have giant muscles and look a bit more like a man. Oh, Vashti, that's who it is. And we realized years before we'd gone traveling to Indonesia in our university years and crossed paths. Anyway, cut forward, he and I fell madly in love and I found my missing piece. The little wild hippie child that didn't really feel like she fitted in anywhere with an intention to find her missing piece found one. Anyway. Cut forward, traveling to Sydney, finding home, marrying this beautiful, shy, gentle engineer, making two sweet babies, which was really good fun, by the way, doing that. I highly recommend it. And actually seeing this incredibly shy guy whose intention was not clear. Seeing a shy guy whose intention was not about being honor, honoring of who he is and who he wanted to be in the world, but who had an intention of staying very safe, staying very small, and staying very hidden from any attention, which did not go well for him when we were walking down the street in Bronte Beach and a photographer came up and went, ooh, you're very handsome. Have you had your photos taken? No, he said. Would you like them? No, he said. And I kick this poor shy guy out in front of the camera. And that is where this shy little engineer in the ripe old age of 36 suddenly found a career in modeling and acting. Crazy shit, right? This is a guy that wouldn't stand up for a pregnant woman on a bus for fear of her saying no and the humiliation. <laughs> right? But what I want you to get here is as much as it's a funny story, we're talking about intention today. What do you think his intention was when he saw that pregnant woman on the bus? Do you think it was, I want to make a difference. There's a little life growing here. I want to support this woman. Or was his intention to stay tiny, small, and hidden? So when you partner with a bossy, vivacious, annoying woman, you don't get to stay hidden anymore. By the way, there's a spot open. I'm looking for a second one, widow here. So if you're that shy one and need some support, see me after. <laughs> so a cut forward again to working really hard, juggling, trying to break through as an actor and an engineer with two tiny little babies and very little income coming in and suddenly an opportunity, which is, hey, we've been offered the lead in a film. And he comes home and he says, Vashti, I've been offered the lead in a film. And I'm like, holy shit, this is it. Everything we've worked for. But there is just one tiny little catch. And that catch is, it's not paid. So we've got no income, two small babies, and this amazing opportunity. And Andy puts his head in his hands and he says, I'm not going to do it. Because his intention is what? What was his intention with two small babies and as the sole provider? Anybody? Any ideas? Money. money. But not just money. He had a, a more purposeful intention. It was about providing. Who here, and I, if you're not there now, you will be at some point, is a creative that would really love to honor their craft but has to feed a family or pay a mortgage? Anybody? You will understand the compromise at some stage that we feel with our creativity and how our intention changes. But I'm here to tell you you can have it all. I mean, you don't have much money doing it, but you can have it all. So Andy, I go back, head in hands, going, I'm not going to do it. And I said to him, okay, so here's the thing. What would you rather? 
Would you rather you told your son that you took the safe option or would you rather you showed your son how to honor your intention for honoring your creativity? And all that happened was this giant juicy smile came across his face and he stood up and called his agent. Now he got paid eventually for that film, but during that time very little. But what that intention to honor his creativity did was open the door to something so much bigger, which became the hit TV series Spartacus. And he went from shy engineer to spray tanned, Adonis wearing, loincloth, superhero, and freer of the slaves. And it became and was one of the biggest budget before you know Netflix took off worldwide. Um, TV series is ever made. Now, at the end of the first year, from all the sword fighting we thought, Andy got a bit of a bad back. And by the way, at this stage, we were about to move to LA. It was kind of like the dream story, you know, shy little family suddenly is gonna go and be having dinner with Brad Pitt and I'm gonna be besties with Angelina, we're gonna get matching tattoos and all of that kind of stuff. It didn't go well for them, obviously. But that bad back actually became something very different. It became stage four cancer. And it became, you actually have three months to live. So on that note, I'm gonna press pause. And I'm gonna ask you to think about what you would do if you were given that information. And I want you to think about, so everybody, I'm not gonna creepily stare at you, I'm gonna do it with you. Close your eyes. I'm gonna pick your pockets and rob your purse. Okay, <laughs> close your eyes, close your eyes, really. I want you to think about somebody telling you, and I, and I really wanna acknowledge anybody here who is going through this with somebody that they love or for themselves, but work with me here. Think about what would be your intention if someone told you that? You have got three months to live. Now open your eyes. What would be your intention? You're right at the front. What would be your intention? To live my life like every day as meaningful and as full as I could. Lovely, thank you. Somebody else. Nicole, you're not allowed to speak. You've spoken already. Travel as much as I can. Travel as much as you can. Somebody else, loudly. Say that again, gorgeous. To really feel the source. To really feel the source. I like that. One more person. To spend as much time with people as possible. To spend as much time. What happens when you get told that potentially you're gonna die? What happens? Fear. Fear? What else? Priorities. Priorities change. Your intention becomes pretty bloody clear. Even if it's fear, what happens is clarity of intention starts to come. I thought you were, gonna, you were coming very, very quickly <laughs> towards me. I was like, she's going to steal my microphone. <laughs> no. So I'm gonna show something to you right now, and some of you are aware of it, and some of you, many of you, in fact, of the audience have worked with me before, so I'm sorry if the story's boring. So I'd like you to watch this now, and we'll reconvene in a moment. The story is about every man who is forced to fight for his own survival. However, many times they knock him down, he will get up and fight, and never, ever stop. There's certainly parts of me that I can identify with that. I am Spartacus! 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 Season one of Spartacus is finished, and I was in a lot of, a lot of pain at the end of that. I wasn't sure what it was, and it wasn't going away. I got a call saying, "Hun, I'm in trouble." I think I've got cancer. And they said, you know, if you do nothing, you'll be dead within three to six months. This is huge. And terrifying. You can do this, Andy. What I want for us now is to be really clear about what we want from this journey, and that is to just learn from each other, grow from it, and not be frightened by it. We're all in it together and getting through it as a family. Yeah, yeah, I'm going to be fine. In my heart, I am convinced that this is all meant to be, and I'm open to the adventure of all of this. 
I feel fine. And I look really well. It's going to be the end of it. It doesn't matter if we are successful or not. It's about the journey. I've got one hair left on my chin. And if you commit to it, something extraordinary will come of it. Who's that? That was Kelly. She snuck a kiss. <laughs> Be here now is all about being present and not fearing what you don't know. And so I feel really inspired to do this, even though I have no idea how it's going to turn out. Now, I'm going to give you a clue how it ends. There's no sequel, as you find out when you watch Spartacus, which is what happens is people watch the show Spartacus, they get to season two, and they're like, where's that smoking hot dude? He's gone. And then they Google it, and then they find the film. And I'll come back to that in a moment. Everybody looks so sad. <laughs> Let's lift it up. So I want to ask you again. I asked you to close your eyes and think about it for a moment. If somebody said to you, you got three to six, what would be your intention? So I want to ask you, what do you think our intention was? What do you think Andy's intention was when he got three to six? From you, audience, tell me. What do you think? Take each day as it came. So take each day as it come. What else do you think our intention was? Big, loud voices. Find a cure. Yeah, what else? Live. Be present. Oh, lots of answers. Man with p person, lady. Yes, lady. Teach, ki teach your kids everything. Okay, so there's loads of like, this is what I would do coming up. But here's the thing. There was one clear thing for us about what we were doing and why we were here, is this must be happening for us. Not this is happening to us, but this must be happening for us. Why is this happening for us? So what we chose to do was to turn the most challenging situation you could be possibly offered up into an opportunity. And so I want you to write this down or literally emboss it on the inside of your eyeballs. <laughs> it's a phrase that I live by and it is my constant intention to honor it, which is everything in life happens for you and not to you. I'm going to talk more about that in a moment. So when this happened for Andy, he said, holy shit, I have to do something with this. What can I do? What are the resources I have? Like a giant TV network behind me, a bossy English wife, all sorts of wonderful people. And he chose without knowing the outcome to honor an intention of doing something meaningful and purposeful with that. Not being eaten up by the fear. Allowing the fear to come up, allowing everything that you are most terrified by, but giving it context and giving it purpose, giving it meaning and making a documentary with it. So what I want you to get here, when we talk about intention, whether it's an intention as a creative, whether it's an intention as a father, whether it's intention as a friend, whether it's an intention in terms of how you want to impact, influence and inspire, it has to have purpose and it has to have meaning. Because if it is simply, in fact, I was driving along this morning from my F45 class at 5.30 before I went for a run on the beach before this. What a wanker I sound. <laughs> and I saw in Bondi, that thing that says Bondi, and it says, it says something about inspiring or narcissism in terms of people from Bondi. And I loved it because what we have to think about, when we think about the power of intention, is it just about personal gain or is it about giving it meaning and purpose? So when we go forward in the rest of this talk, I want you to think about when you set an intention for yourself, it has to have something of meaning included in it. Otherwise, you are just chasing the self-limiting belief. Could you please move the slide, lovely assistant I have there? So when you look at this, I saw this brilliant, beautiful painting last year um, in attachment to the uh, Archibald Prize. And I had to snap my daughter standing in front of it looking up. 
And this painting signifies all the things that we think about in terms of thought, memory, fear, attachment, and how it gets in the way, in my interpretation, of honoring our potential and the clarity of our intention. So what is absolutely necessary, and when your ass is on the line or even your life is on the line, you have so much more clarity about what that intention is, is that you, every single one of you, have to have a sense of what is most important to me, why is it most important to me, and as I started this conversation, how can I demonstrate in that world? How can I do that on a daily basis in how I'm being, how I'm talking to people, the projects I'm working on, and very much how I'm choosing to lead my life? So it's so important that you, not just at the beginning of your day, in any given moment, clarify your intention. So I'm gonna put you right on the spot here. Lovely bearded man, you, yes you. What is your intention for the rest of this conversation this morning? You can't say I don't know. <laughs> to listen, so to listen and to learn. Okay, so you keep coming back to it, right? There's a really juicy intention there. What's your intention for the rest of your day? To be content, okay. So if I'm, someone's really shitty to you in the coffee shop, you're just going to say, my intention is to be, okay, okay, so to hold things lightly. Okay, so what I'm doing with you here is I'm getting you to come into any given moment and to regroup with what your intention is. Because as we all know, things get in the way. We get pissed off, we get frustrated, we get busy, and all of a sudden we can't access what our intention is. So uh, what I want to say at this point is your intention is not just about the bigger picture. It's not just about my intention for the year. It's not my intention for the business. It's you being able to hook into the be here now with me philosophy and actually clarify what your intention is at any given moment. Because what that allows you to do is make a choice in alignment with who you want to be and how you want to impact, influence, and inspire those around you. Next one, please. So here's my intention through the work I do. It's about inspiring people to not only look at their life, but to question how they lead in their life by focusing on what the legacy is you want to leave behind. Sounds pretty daunting, right? We, d we don't really want to think about after we've gone. We want to think about now. So what I want you to think about is the concept of intention being about the legacy that you want to leave at any given moment. So let's just say you walk out of here today, okay? How do you want to leave the person that you spoke to or you sat next to feeling about you? Gentleman in black cap, how do you want to leave today? How do you want to have impacted this room or influenced or inspired it in any way? Can you say it really loudly for me? So, so to have lifted somebody, okay. So the context, the intention is always about how do I want to live? How do I want to lead? But more and most importantly, how do I want to leave others or the situation when I leave? And what I want you to really hear is what makes it the most powerful intention is it's not just after you've croaked it. It's not just after you've died. Let's be totally narcissistic and selfish and enjoy it now. I want you to think about the concept of legacy being what I call immediate legacy. So what is the immediate legacy that you, every single one of you, even that gorgeous little girl that's very patiently here today, hello you, thank you for being here. What's the legacy that you leave behind? And so just to acknowledge, I think the mummy there, I nearly brought my two kids today. So I want to acknowledge the legacy that you leave and your intention to bring your daughter here for whatever reason, or maybe you're the child minder, I'm not really sure. Um, <laughs> I used to find that all the time. I'd go towards these hot young parents and realize I was the only one that wasn't the nanny. <laughs> but just the fact that you're here it leaves a legacy of something fresh and young and new and dynamic and the next generation for me. So when we come back to the conversation of intention, I want you all to think about, you all make a difference in some way. So you will leave a legacy, whatever that is, and it could be really shitty, it could be really mediocre, it could be nothing at all or it could be something that impacts, influences in some way, and inspires somebody. So what I'm inviting you to do right here, right now, is to actually think about the context of intention 
being based around your capacity to impact others, whether it's through your art, whether it's through your work. I'm talking a lot about kissing this morning, whether it's the way you kiss me. Whatever it is, intention grounds itself, anchors itself in how you want to impact, influence, inspire beyond self-gratification. Next slide, please, wonderful assistant. Don't throw up your breakfast. <laughs> I know, it's pretty revolting. We've got two pictures up here. Can everyone see these? Yes? No? Yeah? If you can't, I want you to have a look at them just so I can, and you, you understand what I'm talking about. I'm going to go over here. So you've got two images here. One is of Andy Spartacus. Now, remember where he came from, right? Shy engineer, two very sweet, very humble, very modest parents, taught to stay out of the limelight because that's where it's really safe. And then he becomes, all of a sudden, a spray tan, six-pack superhero who literally, walking down the streets of LA with a wife and two children who got stampled, as, as trampled, I should say, and stamped, that was one of my own words, where men, women, and dogs tried to get past us to get to him. You know, one of those like really cheesy, cheesy, cheesy superstars. Then on the other side, what you've got is a young father with his first little boy. Now, I want to talk for a moment about how our intention gets messy and mixed up. And going back to your point, other man in black cap, about focus and how we get distracted and taken away from our intention. Andy and I had this remarkable relationship, which you'll see in the film, which is where we had the ability to talk about absolutely everything and to kind of work through it. I know, bleh, right? When he took on that role and the pressure of a multi-million dollar show sat on his shoulders and every single day he had to courageously step up there and go beyond what was a very, very humble, shy person inside to go into who he'd found he could be, his potential. That was his own internal combat on a daily basis. Now, the pressure of that formed its own intention. What do you think that intention was? So if we talk about this man on the left, what do you think his intention was on a day-to-day -day basis? Anyone? I sound like I'm bidding. Lovely lady in red. Meet those challenging expectations, great. Now I'm going to go over there, and you look at Andy with little Jesse Red. What do you think his intention was as a man, as a father? What do you think his intention was when he woke up in the morning? Loud? Shout. To provide. to provide. But look at him with Jesse there. Do you think he's thinking my intention is to provide? That maybe was one of them. What else do you think it was? Love? Protect? So, here's the thing, and I'm going to stand right in the middle for effect. Sometimes our intention gets really confused. And the only time in the entirety of mine and Andy's relationships, which was 13 and a half years, did I find Andy not honoring the intention of the man that I was in love with. I found him deprioritizing that little guy and deprioritizing the value of family and deprioritizing the value of our relationship because of the pressures he found over here. And so one of the things we had to do with an intention to have a rich and open and honest relationship was to have conversations about what was really important in terms of our intention, our values, and our relationship. Because one of the things we have to be crystal clear on is we can't have an intention for one thing and an intention for another. Remember back to the beginning of this conversation and then not be in alignment in the middle. So what is absolutely crystal clear important is that whatever your intention is, it has to align with your core values. And our core values were about family, were about creativity, were about authenticity and about honesty. So whatever your intention is, if it doesn't align with your core values, it will go astray and there will be troubles ahead. Next slide, please. So you might want to write this down because this is going to be really useful to you later. So I want to talk a bit about the neuroscience of intention now. We've talked about the juicy, meaningful, purposeful stuff, but now I want to get sciency on your ass. Are there any neuroscience experts in the room? Thank God. <laughs> Don't quote me, just take the learning. 
So focus is a very important thing. And we started with focus. Focus is your ability to not only focus your eyeballs on a certain object in front of you, which is the most obvious, but it is your ability to focus your thinking, your thoughts, and of course, your intention. So I want you to think about focus being in five different stages. And I'm talking about how our brain functions when I'm talking about this. I'm gonna talk about the prefrontal cortex, which is the front part of your amazing brain, the most evolved part of your brain, and then I'm gonna to go to the back part of the head. And we're gonna call it, for one of a better description, just for simple terms, the reptilian brain, which is the oldest part of the brain. The part of the brain was there when you are literally a reptile, creeping around where you had no tan, no Botox, no great hair. You were just doing one thing. And what was that one thing you were doing? trying to survive and not die, doing anything you could to stay alive. So it was like fear, run, flight, or fight. So focus is about these five different aspects. And I want you to check in with yourself and think about where you tend to focus. So have a look at the top one. Vision, and this where it ties into intention. Vision is about your capacity to see over there. This is what I want. This is where I want to go to. This is what I want to have. This is the business I want to have. This is the life I want to have. Or this is what I want to get from this talk this morning. Whatever it is, the vision is the outcome that you are looking towards, the end destination. And that sits in the frontal cortex. The ability we have as human beings to be able to say, I want that over there and I can see what it looks like. The next level of focus is what's called the planning stage, which is still this prefrontal cortex, the how the hell am I gonna get there? But if I don't have a vision, which is our intention, I wanna go over there, we can't build a plan around it, right? The next level of focus is what we're gonna call detail, which is the doing, which is the getting up in the morning, the going to work, the practicing, the learning, whatever it takes to move towards your vision. But here's the thing, and this is what I want you to listen to right now. What gets in the way of working towards that vision and that intention, that exciting thing ahead, is what sits below, what sits inside, what sits in the reptilian brain and the way we are hardwired, which is to look behind us, is our capacity and our ability to focus on the problem. And then, bit by bit, to melt into the drama of the situation. The drama is the blame. The drama is the shame. The drama is the frustration, the hurt, the anger. Now, I bring you back to my little story. If you think about problem, Andy and I had no money. We had two small babies and we were offered the opportunity to do an exciting film. Could you see how easy it would have been to build up a whole story about why we couldn't have done this? why we shouldn't do it. I want you to ask yourself, where have you got an idea, an intention about something you really wanna create and do, but you are actually stuck focusing on the problem of why it can't happen and the story around why? Put your hands up here, anybody here? Oh my God, you guys really make shit happen. So like, you, are you telling me all of you are sitting in that top place? Okay, let's, let's reframe this. Do you know anybody in your life, are you married, in relationship, business partnership, with somebody who sits in drama? The people that are always telling you why it can't happen or why it's not happening or who, why someone's done this or why they didn't get, why they got, anybody know anybody like that? So in the whole conversation today about intention, intention, when we talk about it from a neuroscience perspective, is your ability to take and make the time to clarify what that is at the top, what it is you're working towards, how you wanna get there comes next, and what you need to do in any given moment, moment to move towards it. It is your job in terms of the power of intention to not get stuck in the problem part, to not get stuck in the drama and the story of why this is happening for you, but to focus on what reason is this happening and what can you do with it. Next slide, please. So again, I'm coming out of what is incredibly meaningful and purposeful to give you the basics here so that you have the capacity at any given moment to harness your intention. You have two choices. You can come from a growth mindset, which is a mind that says I am open to learning, I am open to challenge, I am open to problem, 
and I am open to turning any given situation around with an intention to create and get something from it. Or you can be fixed, like I'm fixed to you, stuck and fastened, held tight. I won't let go with my story and my problems and all the reasons why. Or I can choose to grow and expand and let go. Can you hear the difference between the two? Who here is fixed on something and as a result of being fixed to it being one way only is not having traction and not moving forward? Anybody? So what would you have to do in context to intention, your intention to let go to move forward? I'm looking straight at you. You know I'm looking at you. What would you have to do to come from a growth mindset? What would you have to let go of? Uh, yeah, hmm. Okay. So people pleasing and how you're going to look. Okay. I'm going to give you three months to live right now. Do either of those things matter if I give you three months? So why do we wait? Why do we wait until life or some opportunity is so terrifying that we go, fuck it, and go for it? So can I invite you to go, fuck it, and go for it? <laughs> Woohoo! <laughs> now, without turning this into a motivational session, what I want you to get here, if we go back to beautiful Andy and my intention to keep talking about him and to keep working with the documentary. If somebody honorably has lost their life, far too young, 39 years old for God's sake, two beautiful kids and an annoying but very well-intended wife, <laughs> my intention is to use his legacy to inspire others time and time and time again and his children to make the most of your life and even your death, right? Next slide, please. So. Where you choose to focus will actually allow you to harness your intention or not. So just have a little look at this and check in with yourself. Be bloody honest with yourself here, whether this is you, where you sit in this. You are either going to be one of those people that focusing on the problem and the drama, which is all about the past, or you are going to become one of those people who focuses on the possibility, who focuses on the what if, the opportunity, and creates change for the future. So it's a choice, right? It's a simple choice. Attached or grow. Future or past. It's up to you. And that's where intention comes in. Next slide. I'm being rushed on. So as we start to wrap up and look at a very brief opportunity for you to ask questions, I leave with you, and I can say this with absolute pride, because I've sat there in a waiting room with my two children having to do two things that are quite extraordinary. One is tell your children that they're never gonna see their dad again after this visit. And the second one is to hold Andy in my arms and invite him to take his last breath and let him go. And in every given situation, apart from the days where I get really fucked off playing the school bills and phone bills and all of that sort of stuff, and in any given day, in any given situation, for me, my intention always, and I can say this with my hand on heart, always is to be an opportunist, to have a conversation with somebody you don't know, to say yes to things, to give it a go without caring about whether it works or not, but not to be the victim of the situation and the circumstances because it really is too short. So my darlings, I give it back to you and we come back and to the end of this conversation, although there is an opportunity to ask questions. And I ask you again, in the context of your life, in the context of how you want to lead, whatever that means to you, and in the context of how you want to leave people feeling, your legacy, today, tomorrow, and after you've croaked it, I ask you to think about what's your intention. And that's it for me. Have a beautiful day. Okay, just a couple of things though. So I work in the field of human potential and creative opportunity. So you can always email me if you don't get a chance to speak or you're just taking it all in, especially once you've watched the documentary because that will rock your world and help you clarify your intention. So if you don't get a chance to speak today, please feel free to connect with me. I will get back to you eventually.
I can repeat the question. We can do documentary style. Yeah. Yeah. So, so just to repeat the question, I'm a growth mindset person. I'm being you. I'm not as handsome and beautiful. Um, if I'm coming from a growth mindset, I'm always saying yes and doing all the courses and going for it, and I have the tendency to get quite burnt out. Um, is there too much, right? That was me impersonating you. So here's the thing. Growth mindset doesn't mean doing more and saying yes to everything and taking everything on and being an adventure sport person. It's not about doing. Growth is about personal expansion. So the, the answer to your question, my response is, is that growth mindset is sometimes just about being, okay? Because if you're chasing always doing something to get somewhere, whether it's to prove something or to feel like you're always making a difference, sometimes it's actually your capacity to say no. Hence the documentary be called, being called Be Here Now. We're not human doings, we're human beings. So sometimes what I need to do to be an inspiring model is to just not do. It's actually to just reel it back in and ask myself where I need to set bigger boundaries maybe, where I maybe need to, if you're feeling burnt out, there's a misalignment, right? Because when we get aligned, our body gets exhausted. So I'm not honoring my body. So a growth mindset of I'm going to really listen to the learning is to listen to the learning and go, well, maybe I need to let that thing go in order to honor this. Does, does that answer your question? So let's, let's be really clear. Fixed is I've got to do this and I've got to go that and I've got to make the most of life because that's what I have to do. That's fixed. The intention is to honor my best self might mean you just slow it down here and there. Absolutely, yeah. Absolutely, absolutely. There was a beautiful quote that I uh, reposted yesterday and it was something like, close the door. Opportunity will knock if it's meant to come to you. So it's about boundaries, the opportunity to say no to things and not being attached to always saying yes. Thank you. I don't know who the second person was. I haven't got rid of them. I still have the kids. <laughs> I have thought about selling them on eBay many a time. So your question was about strength. You know, how, how do you support somebody going through that? How do you keep on going? How do you be in that situation? I'm really lucky because I have this innate desire to always learn. I'm like innately curious. Whatever the situation is for me, I have this kind of sound that goes on inside my head in, which says something like, this is really hard, but what's possible from it? Like, what, what's this moment about? And so uh, people often say to me, you're incredibly strong. But I go, well, not really. What, what else is there to do other than kind of seek the opportunity that's there? And so the way I operate is, as, as you can kind of tell in the way that I speak, is about seizing the moment. I try not to hold on to the past or worry about the future too much. And that's a day-to-day -day working in itself. So the way I have been strong is to actually look that when you're there drawing on a whiteboard a picture of a dad going up to the stars and thinking about how you're going to tell two children that like, okay, this is the last time you're going to see your daddy. For me, I didn't build or collapse any story into that about it being heartbreaking or sad. Of course it is, right? In that moment, it was how can I best facilitate Jesse and Indy to understand what's going on? Or sitting there with Andy about to get a scan that's going to say you're going to live or you're going to die. It's like not building the story. Don't get me wrong. I go over here and lose my shit, fall apart, take a deep breath and then come back into the moment that's being offered up. 
And so in answer to your beautiful question, for me, the strength is, and this is a strength of mindset. It's not about being tough and stoic and doing the next thing. It's about if I let go of what I'm frightened of and I stop worrying about what's going to happen as a result of it and I just lean into the moment which is now between you and me, what is possible? And, and that is where we all have the resilience, the strength and the capability and with the power of intention to get something very juicy and challenging from it. Next person. Hello. You know, I think when you get thrown as a child in a camper van and you, you know, you're walking around in streets where you don't speak the same language, um, but you have this innate curiosity for life, you find a way of communicating with all sorts of different people in all sorts of situations. That gift of my childhood transitioned into every part of my life. So whether it's a chemo ward or a red carpet or with all of you rat bags here today, I'm curious. I want to know what bike you arrived on. I want to know why she's crying. I want to know what's here. So that curiosity, whether we do or don't speak the language, whether we share the same experiences, to me, th that's who I am. I'm curious about potential and possibility and seizing and squeezing everything out of it. That's what the scary, scary thing is in my eyes. <laughs> no, I'm teasing. I'm teasing, yeah. Um, and my dad's completely bonkers and my mum's completely brilliant, so somehow I survived the two of them. <laughs> okay, we're doing one more question. Anyone got a question? Are they, that's two hands at the same people. Yeah, and I, yeah. 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 So we did a we did a whole series of if you, if you watch if you can find the space to watch the film for yourself it will answer you can answer your own question yeah because it's different for everyone. Everybody's experience is different. The numbness will be what it is. You have to go with that. It's about you asking yourself and where you are at right now, in every given moment, you have to kind of refocus. It's a little bit like being uh, on an ocean at sea and not quite knowing what the weather is going to be. And every moment, you just have to check in with where you are at and what you're frightened of. And one of the most important things, and this is something I'm very passionate at talking about, and I want to get closer to you, but I, I don't know how to get there, is grief is a really interesting thing. We think that grief is about death and after. Grief is a part of every single person's life on a daily basis in terms of what we lose from a pet when we were little to a job to a boyfriend. But what you're in right now is you're determined that you're going to be okay, right? You're focused. It's, it's going to come a certain way. And whether you like it or not, you're going to be processing all sorts of other thoughts. You're going to be processing, even in the day, of what you're going through when you're going through chemo, what you have to let go of. So what is most important to you, and sometimes the people that love around you, is on a daily basis you need to be able to grieve what you're frightened of or what you think you're going to lose. Let yourself feel it, then let it go, and then enjoy the moment. We don't use grief as a tool, so my invitation to you is to watch the documentary, but to also don't suppress what you're frightened of. Feel it. Let it go and then do what you can to enjoy being in the moment of now. Because you're like a rare magical animal, right? That none of you, maybe some of you have experienced, some of you will experience, but you're in this amazing place which no one can really understand. It's like heaven and hell, right? There's hell, it's burning, it's shitty, it's horrible, it's terrifying, but also you're on the precipice of something that most of us don't get to know, which is the question of life and death. So... Don't wish that away. If you can, honor it. Squeeze the little juicy moments and the special things in the day, and that's how you get past the numb.
more thing. <laughs> Fuck off. Get off. So before you go, though, and I, I know I do this with hundreds of people around the world, actually, just come back to where we started. Today at Creative Mornings, it was about the whole conversation of intention. And if you think about the definition of create, which I just love, create is to craft something from nothing. Like, poof, here it is. So intention is your capacity to create in any given moment an intention that is in alignment with who you be, who you are, who you want to be, and what you want to leave behind. So if you take anything from today, whoever you are, wherever you're at, Whatever bike you came on, I want you to think about the power you have to use your brilliant minds and your brain, because you wouldn't be here without it, to actually clarify what you want to create and to have a powerful intention behind absolutely everything you do. Because I guarantee right here, right now, if you put a loudspeaker on your voice, you would not have an intention of, I'm really going to fuck this up for myself at this interview. I really want to look as bad as... That's not intention. That's fear speaking. So to override the fear we have, the self-limitations, the distraction, make sure that whatever you do, create an intention in a moment-by-moment -moment basis for who you want to be. And that is where we'll end.